This presentation will cover our general information concerning APA formatting. It's the first of three presentations about APA. Your second one's going to talk about uh, formatting, and the third one will talk about references and uh, citations. So general overview. APA is the acronym for the American Psychological Association. The APA Manual 7th Edition guidelines are the most commonly used format for manuscripts in the academic environment. Um, and the APA regular, regulates style, format, structure, and organization. Now, APA released the updated format, the 7th edition, in October 2019. There's typically a grace period of a few months to transfer to the new style of formatting. However, and that's where we're at. It was released in October, so the expectation is starting late spring, early summer, we should all be moving over to the 7th edition. However, as with anything, listen to your instructor's request concerning formatting. If your instructor asks you to include information that doesn't align with, align with APA 7th edition, do as they ask. If your instructor asks you to omit stuff, just, just do it. They have specifics of what they do and don't want. Some mechanics of style. Um, there should only be one space after all punctuation. This includes at the end of the sentences. This is different from the 6th edition, which required two spacings after the end punctuation. We want to use double quotation marks to enclose quotations in the text. We use single quotation marks within double quotation marks to set off material that in the original source was enclosed. That sounds convoluted. Basically, if you have a quote within a quote, you use a single quotation marks to show that that quote was originally a quotation. And then we want to use block quotations for any quote that is 40 words or more. Um, for block quotes, we want to make sure that you do not use quotation marks to enclose the block quote, and you want to keep any quotation marks from the original source material. If you're going to add content to a direct quote or to enclose parenthetical material that is already within a parenthesis, you would need to use brackets. If you need to remove information from a quote to help it read smoother, you can use ellipses to show where that information has be re been removed. Now, it's very important not to change the meaning of the original work if you use brackets or ellipses. If you're writing a paper about, um, let me think, if you're writing a paper discussing how hummingbirds are better pollinators than bees, you cannot manipulate a quote that somehow suggests bees are, um, not pollinators, if that made any sense. Um, and then, of course, we want to use numerals for numbers 10 and over, units of measurements like 2.5 in inches, percentages, ratios, times, dates, ages, etc. If it's 9 or under and it's not one of those things, then you would write out the word. Grammar. Um, so there's a couple changes in the past with writing. It's been that you have to use third per, uh, third person narrative completely, um, singular consistency, all that kind of stuff. And, and APA has updated things with the world developing. So it is now okay to use first person narrative in your paper. You can say I, me, my, we, our, that kind of thing. It is okay to use the singular they. So they, them, theirs, themselves as the generic third person. So rather than saying um, Max went to his or her birthday, I'm assuming Max is a you know gender neutral name, we could say Max went to their birthday. There's only one space necessary at the end of your sentences. I, I know I identified this earlier. We want to use the Oxford comma, which is also known as the serial comma, and basically the Oxford comma is a comma used at the penultimate item in a list of three or more items before the and or the or. You want to use an M dash, what you see an example of right there, to set off a parenthetical expression. You use an N dash to indicate a range. And big thing is to not use quotation marks to highlight a key term or phrase. We want to use italics instead. These are your headings. Uh, one key thing is to never use your introduction as a heading. So if you're starting your paper, don't make one of the headings introduction. We know it's your introduction. It's, it's the first paragraph of your paper. If you look at level one, 
centered bold title case heading that is the title of your paper that is the title of your abstract that is the title of your references page nothing else in your paper should have that level one heading afterwards you've got levels two three four and five depending on on how your paper flows will depend on, on how many headings you need to use frankly i doubt you would be using levels four and five frankly maybe even three in um, undergraduate work starting a master's degree you might be using you know three four phds would definitely require using all of them but for my class don't worry if you don't have headings outside of level one it's completely fine this information came from the american psychological association published in 2020 it is the concise guide to the apa style seventh edition and you can find the reference information right there hope you enjoyed it